Good evening, everyone. So glad that everybody's here. I hope to see you tomorrow in the Thanksgiving lunch, Paula's house. So oh, we need to change this. So this is the topic of our discussion today. It's basically a reflection on the, the topic of understanding. Why we were inspired to discuss about this? Well, in the 90s, there is a computer game that called the Need for Speed. Who played this game? I, I used to play. Is the only? Do you play the game? Was okay. So as a computer game, I believe that this game still exists nowadays. So when we are think about what we talk, um, what we're gonna reflect and discuss in this month of November, so this came to our mind. Why? Because the month of November is a month that is a big transition, isn't it, from one season to another season. I mean, we are already like almost in the middle of the fall, but right now we start to feel the change in the temperature. So it's a little bit cold, it's winding, winding is uh, raining, um, and then the, the trees become without the leaves, so it's a lot of change. But also, this month, especially here in the US and in Brazil, we have the elections. Um, and Thanksgiving is going to close the month. And when we look at the scenario that we are living in, one thing that we think that is missing is understanding. Because the number one ca cause of all the turmoil that we go through is because there is no a common ground. So we become polarized. This is happening in our relationships in general. The relationship, the need for understanding our relationships in our family, that is the first, um, I would say, ground that we need to work, you know. And then this move to our workplace, to our community, to our political, you know, arena. And we have been seeing this happen over and over. Here is something that we like to point out. We are not here in the position to judge what's wrong or right. But we must reflect what is our role, like our me, Daniel, you, we, before what happened outside of our life, of our um, community, and how we can um, prepare ourselves not to fall on the mess that other people cause. Because that is the, te that is the test for us, is that things has happened. We are not saying here that we should avoid, because we learn in spiritism that in order to progress, we need to have what? Obstacles. But here is something that we need to learn, is how we are going to overcome those obstacles. And those obstacles is in the moral field. Moral means like, you know, how we are going to deal with our, you know, someone that thinks different from us. How I'm going to reconcile with that family member that is not in agreement with, with our viewpoint or point of view and vice versa. So, because we live nowadays, we have two lives. One that is like physical life, communication that we do one on one, but we have the virtual life and we cannot ignore that we live a second life, not a spiritual life, because this is the third life, isn't it? But the virtual life became so important in our lives that we present almost 50%. So I believe that we are all here have cell phone, and, and our life is in the, the palm of our hands nowadays. And the social life that we have, the visual life that we have nowadays, has been a, I would say, motive of a lot of disagreement and personal attack. And it looks like that respect is just like saying goodbye to all of us. I mean, I say like, you know, because we see what other people is saying. 
And this became dangerous, you know why? Because we forgot that there is another population that is the spirit population that is also participating without we, without, uh, we know that they are, the influence of them. You know how many times we read some, an article or a post that was um, done by a friend or um, family member and we like felt, we still feel that emotion, the good one, isn't it? So the emotion too, if we can't go and say, what, what's wrong with you? Just get the ask, um, you know, <laughs> exactly. So this little introduction about this topic is that I'm not saying anything new here. You all here knows what I'm talking about because we are living this. But uh, it is important for us to reflect upon those um, situation and rescue this title, the need for understanding, instead need for speed, you know. So <coughs> when we talk about disagreement or when we talk about understanding, it's always there is all there is always two sides, isn't it? There is no, I mean, like, if you're just by yourself, you're fine, you don't need to, you, there is no struggle. You know, those that live, they are single here, I mean, they got there in their home, I mean, if they don't leave the cell phone, they just, like, talk to themselves, of the spirit, you know? But the moment you interact with someone that is incarnate, then the situation may, may arise. This happened, especially we have big family, if you have a big family. So let us just uh, reflect up, uh, 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 about this uh, situation. So majority of fights of wars that happen, so we lack this understanding. And everything is in the arena of the truth. Or oh, oh, who is right, who is wrong. And we are always like to be right, isn't it? Otherwise, there is no fun, you know? So the challenge is to accept that we are wrong. I mean, we are here are more like understandable, so we sometimes accept, okay, it's my mistake, my bad, I was wrong. But that's not what we see out there, you know? It's not. I mean, we, we see like what happened right now, not in the political arena, but uh, also in schools, you know? We see all this, um, you know, um, things that happen if people get upset because they don't agree. We are not put here a population that is mental will. We are not m willing, will. Or we are not putting put this population. We are putting here people that it's okay, but just because they don't agree with your personal or community belief, they felt that they have the right to go and make justice. But, you know, reincarnation and the process of evolution will bring us to face uh, the reality. So in my situation that there is no, um, a, um, that we think that we have the right, you know, this is your side of the, the situation. But also there is the other side. There is he or she or their side. And then there is what? The truth. So what is understand come in this, um, scheme in this equation over there. If you have to point out what is the understanding in this equation here, okay, Lam. Do you think it's gonna be here? It's gonna be here? It's gonna be here? Okay. So it's gonna be over there in the three intersections. So that's the particular area of this situation. Daniel, okay, I understand over there, but explain me in the day-to-day -day life. Okay, so we have a person A and a person B that has a disagreement, okay? They think that, you know, the way that they see X situation is the right way. So then we have, in order for us to achieve this common ground here that we are naming understanding, what we need to, there is two components. We need to present our view clearly, but also accept the other person's view 
so they can meet in the middle, you know? So the best way to look at this, like for example, we have understanding. There is one thing that precedes understanding that we call what? Listen, but uh, so in order to listen, that is to have what? There is another thing that precedes the, the listen. Conversation. Everything starts because everything starts, the war starts because there is miscommunication. You know? So the communication, before even we move to the understanding, we need to learn how to communicate. I'm still learning. You need to learn how to present in our idea clearly and make our points clearly because otherwise the other side is not going to get it. You know? I mean, if we bring this in a cultural, cultural setting, this is going to multiply by three, by five, by ten, you know? Because we are assuming that the other person is understanding what I'm saying. So, but if we, if we, what is that? Okay. Yeah, 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 we assume that. So, but if we master the, the communication, will be easy for us to understand, to understand, and vice versa. <coughs> but then, what is the result of this that come next? That we need the most tolerance. What is that? Open mind. Open mind. Yeah, I, I, yeah. There is a, there is a little error here that I, let me fix this here, because otherwise my communication with you guys is not going to be clear. So I just need to, huh? Uh, no, I need to, what is there? Okay, that's better here. Need to put this, uh, Right. Oops. Great. So a little. Okay. So now I put the. Ah. So now we have a tolerance. That is all the thing that we are not talking about tolerance. We are not talking about forgiveness. We are not talking about um, um, acceptance, because this down in the road. So we are just discussing here the foundation of, um, you know, to avoid big turmoil or chaos or wars in our personal life. So is this clear? I know that the idea for us here is to leave this place and do our own reflect, reflection in what, what should we do, you know, to mitigate minimize any personal problem that we have outside. We have no, um, we have no, um, no, audace, no, we have no expectation that we're gonna change the society. We're gonna change our neighborhood. That's not, is we, what we're gonna change inside ourselves that will cause an impact in our family, in our workplace, when we drive every day the same, um, um, road to our work. So that's the idea. So Albert Einstein said once, peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. True or false? But in order for us to have understand what we need to have as a prerequisite, we need to know how to communicate, you know? I have an example, open mind, Paul is saying open mind, of course. We communicate, we have open mind. So that is all this, um, uh, how do you say, pre prerequisite that we need to have in our life. And nowadays, because we have the verbal communication, we have also the virtual communication. Yeah, and we already discussed this here before about, you know, we are getting so lazy that even to type, <laughs> You know, we don't want it to. And I agree, it's like it's take your time. So we want it to speed up. We want it to do several things in the same time. So we use emojis in it, like, so put little heart and, you know, sign to um, 
transmit what we are thinking. There is nothing wrong with this. The Egyptians already did this, the ancients. You know, when you see all this, you know, scripture in the stone, that's the, the they are the one that created this. You know, so if they wanted to talk about animal, they go over there and, just, the, and draw animals and the sun. So, but let us think about this, uh, what Albert Einstein is saying. Because when we talk about peace, we, we, we kind of complicate, isn't it? We, we just like, we think that is something very complex. We have, you know, that, you know, compassion, forgiveness. Look, there is no way we can reach those virtues before we master this one. In order for us to, be f to forgive and to be compassionate, you know, to respect, imagine love, the unconditional love, you know. Do you love someone that you don't respect? So the respect comes also, is another virtue that will be achieved after we go through this process here. So that's why I think before we discuss this miraculous um, approach to have a happy life, we need to touch on this, the foundation of um, our relationship. That first is communication. Communication means something that is in common. Okay, I bring something, you bring something, and we need to be in common. If there is no, is common, communication. So if there is no common ground, there is no communication. This happens a lot when we cross that boundary of our emotions, so and then people start to go south. Okay. So <coughs> looking the gosp the gospel, um, we find a lot of teachings um, and I would like to say that in religion per se, the main foundation is to um, make us better individual, to respect one another, to love one another, to apply what we learn, uh, uh, what we have learned about uh, the golden rule. The golden rule is a uh, statement, is a um, recommendation that is found in all religion, all, that is due to other, what, you know, we expect them to do to you. So that is the common ground, okay? So by looking in the, the gospel according to spiritism, uh, we are trying to find, you know, a passage um, that we will illustrate our um, conversation, our reflection about understanding. And we are to talk about understand, we are also somehow talking about tolerance, you know, that's why I put tolerance as one virtue that is come after we understand, because then we understand the situation, then it's easy for us to tolerate the other person. Here is something that I will need to disclaim, but the fact that we tolerate doesn't mean that we agree, okay? So, Okay, I might not like my neighbor, but if I understand that this neighbor is having a rough life, that probably, you know, his wife or her husband left and she has to work three times during, the, uh, have three jobs. So then I'm starting to understand why the person let or doesn't take care of their house or put the trash outside and you know what I mean because the person might not have time doesn't mean that we agree we condone with that action so this is something that we need to you know to put in perspective because otherwise we move to a area that is the so powerful God you know judgment and who are we to judge so Talk about understanding tolerance is a moral charity. And I was surprised when I found this in the gospel. This is a, uh, oh, I forgot to put it here there. Okay, I'm, I'm going to fix this. It's a text for you to understand me, okay? So, and to tolerate. So, I need to, 
that is uh okay so i'm gonna put yellow here okay so i guess you guys are gonna okay so this is chapter 15 <laughs> you cannot even see it <laughs> chapter 15 and this chapter talk about do not let your left hand knows what your right hand is doing and it's a communication by the spirit uh, Rosalia. That was uh, this communication. This spirit brought his, uh, this communication in 1860, and it's chapter, um, it's chapter. Uh, in fact, it's chapter 13. I'm sorry, it's wrong over there. Item nine. And so this is a long text. So we're not going to have time to read this. But there is one paragraph that really caught my attention. And let's read this paragraph so we can reflect how we're going to work in our understanding of tolerance um, virtue, okay? Because all of us here already have some understand, degree that un understand tolerance, but the idea here is master this, is get 100%. Probably in 100 or 1,000 reincarnations we're going to get there. But we need to start today, isn't it? We need to start today. There is that saying that, you know, um, a, I don't know, 10,000 mile is start with one step. So w that's what we are doing right now here. So as you see here, I put this emoji here because I, you know, I'm not a big fan, but I, you know, I, since everybody does and sometimes it's funny. So there is a scale here. I don't know if you guys saw here, there is someone that is very upset and someone that's very loving, okay? I hope I translate the emotions right here, okay? So hear what Sister Rosalia says, okay? Let's read. She says about this, moral charity consists in giving support to one another, and it is what you press the least on the lower order, lower order world, world where you are incarnate for now. Believe me, her. There is a great merit in knowing how to keep quiet and let a more ignorant person speak. This is yet another kind of charity. I just highlight what she... So first she's saying like what? She's saying that, you know, to have this moral charity, we need to support one another. We need to kind of accept, isn't it, Paula? even if the person is wrong. But here she's saying something that will give to us, of course, she's saying that in the level that we are, we don't practice this moral charity because we are in this lower order world, you know? This is difficult. This is difficult, isn't it? But it's not impossible to shut, you know, yourself or to not revenge, you know, to control our emotion. That's the beauty of be human. Because when you, someone step on your toes and you kick the person back, you are not different as an animal, as a dog, as a cat, because that's what animals do, you know? So, but when you resist and you control the impulse, the reaction, the instinct, then show to us that we are a little bit ahead of the scale of evolution. So, and then she continues, um, knowing how to turn a deaf ear when a mocking word escape the mouth accustomed to scorn, not pay any attention to the smears of the smear of disdain that greets your entrance among persons who often wrongly think that they are above you, whereas, whereas in the spirit life, the only true life, they are sometimes far from it. These are meritorious act, not of humility, but of charity, because not pay attention to someone else's wrongs portrays moral charity. Wow. When I read this, I was like, okay, let me read again. Because, and then, to make sure that I was understand what she's saying, I read in Portuguese. That's my mother language. So I really wanted to understand what she's saying here. As you, wow, I've never, never come to us this idea that, you know, 
just like keep silence even when you think that you're right is a tremendous virtue that she called moral charity. We know that, isn't it? But the way she put it here, very poetic, very, you know, eloquent. I mean, I said, oh my God, Sister Rosalia, please inspire us here, you know, in our lives, because it's so beautiful. If you want to, you, you can go to the gospel and read the whole, uh, the whole, the whole text uh, about moral charity. So, what we can extract from this passage for our life? You know, in a simple uh, way, it's like, look, listen more, as the ask just mentioned. And this is something that sometimes when we think that we have the right, we want to go deep, you know, in the situation and, and push our point of view. And then at the end, we start to feel miserable, bad, you know? Um, so it's something for us to meditate, you know? It is very important for us to meditate. Before we demand that the government change, that, you know, politician or, you know, whatever, our neighborhood, let's think about this. And then the question is, who is our mother and guide? Do you guys know what happened to Jesus? And the whole process of the crucifixion, from the moment he was arrested, to the moment he was crucified, to the moment that he was almost dying on the cross, he was zip it up. You know? this was, that's the way I tell my daughter when she raised her. Do like, Yes, he's our model, and he was right. He's the governor of this planet, you know. He could just like, boom, you know, but he didn't. Why? There is a great lesson in that the whole process of uh, the crucifixion and, and the 24 hours when Jesus was arrested. And we forget about this. And then, in our organization, we wanted to push our truth. That's what happened after. The church and Spirit Center, I'm not going to put this person out because we are what? Who are the church a thousand years ago? We. If we believe in past life, reincarnation, we cannot look at the book of history or history book and say, well, you know, those people over there, you know, they burn people in stake. You know, look at the church, how it was. Hey, we are talking about ourselves. That's why nowadays when we see other religion, you know, doing stuff, it's better for us to pray and say, well, at least I'm not doing that. I did that, you know, so what can I do here to instead stay here and try to judge and, and push the truth? So it's important for us to... to to analyze. I personally, I like when I read history to put myself in that situation. Because when we read the history, what we do it? We just like put ourselves outside. Look at what happened. For example, let's go back 200 years ago when this country here has a slave. We think that we are not part of that, don't you? But we were. If we believe in the incarnation past life. We were at some moment, we were probably not here in the US, Brazil, South American, Central American, or Europe as, you know, slave masters, helping the process of commerce. It's better we think about this. You know why? Because 200 years from now, 500 years from now, we may be looking what happened nowadays and think that we have nothing to do with that. This. That's why it's important for us to always remember Jesus. Always remember Jesus. Of course, if you go to, you know, other religion, Buddha, you know, 
uh, Gandhi, because those men, I mean, we watched the movie of um, Mother Teresa last, last Saturday here. The, those that were here watching the movie, what a beautiful, I mean, her life itself is a loving book, you know? But we see what she went through. Did you, re did you remember? I mean, it was, was rough, isn't it? So it is important for us to have this uh, view, you know, so we can make peace with ourselves. When we make peace with ourselves, then we don't need to demand peace from our society, from other people. So we just believe that, you know, there is a great power watching over us. Okay? So, I like this. Let's read. This is like, <laughs> I found this uh, in the internet, but I, I think this illustrates what Sister Rosalia brought to us. This, this apprentice, this student, turned to his master and said, Master, what is the secret of happiness? And the master said, not to argue with you idiots. You know? And the student replied to the master, Master, I completely disagree that this is the secret. <laughs> and the master just said, yes, you're right. So this is, this is uh, it's just for us to laugh, to laugh, you know? Uh, because w when you read this, I mean, like, when I, I was, like, looking, this, oh, my God, this looks, you know? That's so wise, isn't it? So wise. So... Forget everything that I said, but keep this. If you have a cell phone, please take a picture. <laughs> yes, post in your Facebook, in whatever you know, social media you have. Because this thing here, you know, is funny, but it also is a lesson to ourselves. You know? So I think the problem is that until here, we feel that we are like in the top. But from here, then we need to show our true color here, you know? So in the book, um, okay, it's Minute of Wisdom. Uh, this book is not in English, I'm sorry. Yeah, I talk about this passage here on Monday, so I think it's appropriate for, for this talk. This, um, this book was wrote by uh, this Brazilian writer. He was a priest, okay? But then he got a little bit disappointed with what, you know, the Catholic Church was doing that time. This was in the 30s, 1930s in Brazil. And so he decided to leave the priesthood and went back to be just a regular cit cit uh, uh, citizen. How do you say cidadão in English? Citizen, yes. And so he became, a, he has a talk show and he became a spiritist. Uh, so, because in that time, spiritism in Brazil was not open, perhaps like, like is uh, nowadays, he decided to, in his talk show, he decided to bring this very small message, inspirational message, to help the listeners, without saying that was a spiritual message, okay? And after, you know, one year writing those messages, so he decided to publish this book because this was just one minute that she, he has before the program start. And the, this is the message 211. So he was able to collect 280 something, almost 300 messages. So this one I translate to English because I think it's so in sync what with our study here. So we, we put the title because this message has no titles. So, thinking alike, okay? And he says, do not expect that others think like you. Each person is at a different level of evolution, on a different degree of the great climb. No one has the total truth because the absolute and total truth is God and the infinite. No being can contain the infinite. Search for the truth for yourself, but do not demand that others think like you, as much as you do not like that others control your 
thoughts, your action, your behavior. So I think this small message is simple, isn't it? But you can read this, imagine you read this in the morning, like we read Happy Life. This really can help us to avoid, to engage in a, in a heat conversation if we keep this suggestion in our mind, isn't it? So I think here lies one of the great problems that we have in our society. First, to hold, you know, not to, not to respond. That's difficult for us. Second, we have this expectation or assumption to, um, to have the person behave like the way we want. You know, why you dress this way, you know? Or why you do things this way or that way? Why don't you do this way? Well, the way that you are telling the person to do is w the way that you do. Well, we are not talking about here in the process of education for children, because then we cannot go to another extreme. There is a hierarchy in the process of evolution. So in the universe, there is laws that govern the movement of the planet. Can you believe if the planet Earth decides to, guess what, I don't want it to rotate this way anymore. I want it to go all the way around. It's going to destroy the solar system. Why this doesn't happen? Why? Because everything that happens follows a divine law. So in our relationships, also there is those laws, the moral laws. Joanna Judge published a book that she called The Family Constel Constellation. And Paula has uh, know the book, isn't it? We used to have the book here. Uh, and the way she approached the relationship in family is by using, compared to how, you know, the universe, the planet works. So it is important for us that we first educate ourselves so we can educate well those that come under our responsibility. Our children, the teachers, you know, if you are managed in a, in a, in a, in a department, in a, so you need to watch out what you do, what you say, because your employee will come after you if you don't comply with the rules and regulation of that particular department. This is very important, very important. And sometimes, as an employee, we may think that we know more than our supervisor. Sometimes I think I know more than my supervisor. But be careful. Be very careful. Very careful when this thing cross your mind. You need to think like 10 times if, you know, because even though you know more than your supervisor, your position is not the supervisor. So you need to wait for the time to bring what you think is the best. Why we say that? Because we have a great example in history that think no more than the master. And the example is of, from whom? Who is, who, who is in the history of Christianity that think that no more than the master? Judas. So there is only two sides in our progress and revolution. Jesus' side, Judas' side. Which side are you going to be? So we need to pay attention to what's crossing our mind. I'm not saying that, you know, when things is wrong, we should not step up. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you need to reflect and analyze everything that crosses your mind. Period. And we need to do that in order for us to not compromise our incarnation. Isn't it, Raphael? We talked before we come here that we're going to give this talk together. <laughs> so not to compromise our, our incarnation. It is important, OK? Joanna de Angelis, you know, in Happy Life, there is a passage 
in this chap um, page 164, this is still in Portuguese. She said, be tolerant of your neighbor as you would hope he or she would be tolerant of you in a similar moment. Nobody on earth today moves ahead without mistakes, without fears, without torments, without generating affliction when intending to do the right things and producing suffering when attempting to make peace. Everyone needs understanding as, and as a result, tolerance. That's why that idea to have communication, understanding, tolerance came. <laughs> When I read this, I oh, okay, so before tolerance, there is understanding, okay? So, so tolerance today, so that you may reap it tomorrow. So when we leave here tonight, if someone cut you off in the 695, pray and say, go with God. With God, not with other, the other side, okay? Uh, beautiful message. Small, so minute, minute of wisdom and happy life has the res recipe for us to exercise our understanding and our tolerance. We just need to put in practice. To finalize, in the spirit, then before I read the spirit's book, and I'm going to uh, bring to you why I decided to get this two question. Because sometime when we have this expectation that the person needs to do things the way that we want. And sometimes we don't understand. And, and we don't why this person keep doing the same thing? Why this person keep tweeting this message that distress, distress the whole, you know, planet? You know, I mean, and then what we do? We get upset. If we get upset, it's lack of what? And? Understand you, you know. I know that tolerance is better than understand, but understand is the main thing, okay? Because what happens is sometimes we don't have the opportunity to engage with the person, you know. We don't, we just see the tweet or the post, you know. <laughs> we are not talking about anyone specific, we are talking about our relationships here with our friends and family. So then we expect that that person has the same vision that we have, you know? And, and we don't understand why. And it's so beautiful because in the Spirit's book, Kardec question, I'm gonna ask those that are doing the study here on Thursday, okay? Because we studied this before. There is a question in the Spirit's book that Kardec asked, and the question is, are all spirits equal, or is there some kind of hierarchy among them? Well, first of all, if we are not, if we have this disagreement, either we put ourselves above or below. And let's tell the truth, we never wanted to put ourselves below. <laughs> we think that we are both, okay? That's why we sometimes we don't understand. So to understand needs to have what? Communication. To have communication, we need to be in the same level, okay? That's why it's very dangerous for us to um, confront idiots, <laughs> you know? Because otherwise, we need to, you know, load out so much, you know? And then we, we need to put ourselves in the same, the same level. So let me make a parent here, because in spiritism, nobody is idiots like him. So ignorant, that would be the best word, means the lack of knowledge, experience, okay? So for example, if a kid walks here and drops something, because they should learn how to walk, we understand that, do we? Why? Because it's a child, isn't it? Why we don't understand if an adult come here and, you know, stumble in something? What are we going to do it? Do you understand? We're going to pay attention. You don't see this in front of you? We're going to say that, isn't it? Because there is an expectation that that person see the way we see it. And we get upset. So Kardec is asking this in the spiritual level. But we are spirit, incarnate one. So this applies to us. Okay, and so the answer was like this. 
there are different orders. A, there are of different orders according to their individual degree of self-purification. The self-purification here is is the process of experience and learning. Okay. So the next four question, the question a hundred, and I mentioned this before. There is a question about the hierarchy of spirit. Okay. So, and how many class they, Chris and Yasko, how many classes we learn? There is three classes. Which one is that? Those class, in perfect order. What's the second one? Good spirit and pure spirit. In the the third one, that is the lowest one, the imperfect order has five subcategory. Yeah. Five. The second the second order has four, and the first order just one. That's pure spirit. So we have like ten degrees of um, according to the of ten degree of purification. Okay. So the one that's very here in the bottom is close to the animal kingdom, okay? So we are just like visualize that we have the vegetable kingdom, we have the animal kingdom, we have the human kingdom, and then after this kingdom, which one the next? The pure one after that, angelic, okay? That we are very, 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 very far away, okay? Okay, so, and then he explained this. So then we stop and think, okay, we are not put ourselves above, but at the moment that we don't understand the other person, there is only two situations. Either we think that we are above, or the person is above. If we make the person above, we are automatically, by default, what? Below. Isn't it? Can we make this disconnection when we are in a heat conversation? It's difficult, but uh, that's, that's the equation. The second question, what is the most effective means for improving ourselves in this life and for resisting the draw of evil? In another word, how can, become, how can I become like Jesus? You know? Because sometimes we say, I'm not Jesus. But uh, guess what? We are moving one day to become a pure spirit to be 100% tolerant, 100% patient, 100% understand, but 100% of all virtue that we already um, identified. That is about, the psychologist says that there is about 150, 200 virtues. Can you believe? We just talk about a couple of them here. But if you got your psychologist, how many? How many visual we supposed to have? Yeah, I read this. No, I believe you. you believe me? <laughs> okay, I'm just check check the same balance. No fake news here, okay? I, I don't want to to bring any fake news, so I'm checking with Paula because she's a psychologist here. So no, no, no. Yeah, but I'm talking about like a lifespan, like so. It's how much? How much? Like a hundred, a hundred fifty visual. The number 109, yeah. Okay, it's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so, so and then the answer is very short. It's just one sentence that the Spirit says, a sage of integrity has told you, know themselves. How, okay, how come, I, so what are you talking about? How do we know ourselves? And in Spiritism, we learn something about self-transformation, um, in Portugal we say reforma intima, inner reform, inner transformation. How, how come I'm going to know myself? You're going to be open mind. Okay. So here is something that we like to bring for us to understand. Okay. In order for know ourselves, we really need to tolerate and to understand and to look our behavior. What and this is start where? What's go out and come in, what we generate in our minds. That's the start point, okay? Let's not even discuss like we wanna get mad or upset. Let's not go over there. First we need to do the self 
evaluation. Observe how you feel when someone that you don't like get in the room for the meeting. And then you need to control that, you know? So what? Yes. So every day you need to do evaluation. And here is something, because during the day it's so busy, make a schedule with yourself to do this before sleep. That you go over your day and they say, okay, mm, today, you know, I, I should have not opened my mouth. Check, you know, you need to work on that, okay? You need to work on that, you know? But also, we need to pat ourselves and say, okay, today I did very good. I did good advice, you know, I behaved well. I got a promotion, means that, you know, I'm doing my work well. So, so we need to do this check and balance with our lives first. So here is something for us to understand. Uh, in order for us to know ourselves, we need to, and this that I'm going to put here, we all have, okay? Because this is the easy w easiest one. We all have. Some in more degree or in less degree, and, but at the end of the day, we all have this. And we need to pay attention to these four um, words that I'm going to post here. We all have vices. If you don't, it's not supposed to be reincarnate. Okay? <laughs> We all have vices, automatically we have imperfection. We all have qualities, and we all have virtues, okay? So that's the way we're gonna learn ourselves. First of all, let's identify which kind of vices I have, okay? I'm trying to bring this in a practical way, because just, just to say know yourself, I'm just turn around and go home and say, okay, what is the tools? How am I gonna start? What is the start point? First, vices. Which, what kind of vice I have? I, I, not exactly. I mean, like, I'm just bringing, like, you know, the big picture here. Qualities. We all have qualities, you know. We all have some degree of, you know, empathy. You know, when we see what happened, you know, the catastrophe, we feel that, you know, we should do something. So let's boost our quality. Let's boost our virtues and let us, you know, minimize or work, not minimize, work in our vices, in our imperfection. One thing that we should not do it is try to eradicate. Like, okay, you know, I need to eliminate my vice. No, you're going to set yourself for failing. You know why? Because the vices is behavior that we bring in the process of evolution, what we need to do is work on this so we can diminish the vices and potentiate the virtues. So in the Spirit's book, we, we learned that uh, there is a question that is about how can we get rid of um, pride and selfish? The, the Kardec asked this question. And and they say, the question is, how can we get rid of, how can uproot, uproot mean cut, um, pride and selfishness? And they still said, you can't, because this part of your nature is embedded in, in, in our evolution. What you can do is potentiate your spiritual life, so automatically the pride and selfish will diminish until disappear completely. But you say, okay, I'm from today on, I'm not going to be pride anymore. That's not going to happen. You know, it's a process, it's a process. <coughs> so to finalize, let's finalize with our guidance model. And let's keep this in our mind. So all of Jesus' morals are summed, in, summed up in charity and humility. That is, in the two views to contrary to selfishness and pride. In all his teaching, his points, he points to these two virtues as being the way to eternal happiness. So there is no like bullet point here today, there is no 
chips to bring home. I think in this area of moral, charity, virtues, there is only one thing we can do it. We can look who is our idols, look who, who we, is our mother, and try to imitate. That's it. There is no bullet, ma magic, magic bullet here. There is no like step by step. Okay, Daniel, give me like three step by step that I can do. No, there is not. Just look at the lives of those that has come and um, help humanity to progress, morally speaking. They are our guiding models. So model. So with that, let us open for question and answer. We have like five, ten minutes. Comment. Good. Is everybody? Hmm? If there is no question, means that everybody understand. Oh, you didn't.